either from right to left or uh, I'm confused about that. <laughs> if some of you watched uh, Ms. Anjum Ampere's pres presentations yesterday, you would have seen that she does uh, her presentations from um, uh, right to left. Okay, and we were chatting about this last night uh, over dinner because the center that we learned from Ms. Arthi and myself does things from right to left and questioning, could it be a cultural thing? That is it working from right to left because of the language and the culture in that country could be. We're exploring it. Ms. Anjum said she's going to put that uh, question forth in her forum and um, find the answer for it. So when she does, then I will talk to you about that. Mm -hmm. Sorry. In my class, the child has um, started to read uh, Sinonisha, and then in the class we teach English, right? Learn three letter words. And uh, the way how to blend is like almost like Indonesian, like bear, simba. So the, the, the parent asks uh, the teacher why he have to teach them to blend the three letter words because it will mix, the letter will make the child confused, right? If they learn by Same word here. Yeah. Same word. Yeah. So, which one we have to teach? I mean, how to handle it in this case? How many of you are teaching um, multilingual classrooms? Okay. Bahasa in English? Yes. Any Mandarin? Yes. 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 Okay. Why don't we just talk about children are in this absorbent mind uh, stage. They are in the sensitive period for learning language. Research has shown time and time again that the languages that they're exposed to at this age, it's easy for them to learn it at this age. Okay? We have this uh, you know, pre-decided way of thinking that oh, it will be very hard and it will be very difficult. They are more open. Like I said, they don't have these fixations in their mind. This is, how can I learn two languages at one time? Is it possible for me? How many of you have seen success with children learning more than one language at a time? Okay, you've seen this, so it does work, right? <laughs> it does work. I have gone to schools that are trilingual, English, Bahasa, and Mandarin. I've conducted workshops where I have all three people there. And then they do their presentations back to me in those languages. I've had teachers sit beside me and present number rods in Mandarin. Don't know what they're saying okay, when they're talking, but they're doing it step by step because that's the language they're working with. School is trilingual and they're very successful. My tutor, whom I learned from in the late 90s, she lives in Colorado right now. And she's opened up a school there, a Montessori school. It's Beautiful. A lot of you follow her and you see her ideas. She does some amazing things. And she's working in a, she has set up her school in Colorado to be bilingual English and Mandarin at the same time. And she's, she writes to me and she says, please find sandpaper Mandarin letters for me because you're in the Far East. Still looking out if you ever make or no, tell me. Okay? And she's doing it very successfully. Alright? The children can and America is a country where not necessarily you have that much exposure to Mandarin, but there's a huge demand for it, and the children are absorbing it and learning it and, um, you know, uh, producing it very successfully. So it's on us as educators to answer your question to give the parents that confidence. Hopefully this class has given you some of the um, tools to be able to answer the parents who are concerned. Yeah? If you have confidence, remember something, okay? Parents are looking to you for confidence in what you're doing. And if you're sure about what you're doing and you've seen success, you have, right? You have seen success, then that's what you're going to tell them. And then they're going to have that faith in you, right? I'm putting my child in your hands. I don't know anything about this, okay? I'm trusting you. And if I'm concerned, do you really think my child can handle two languages? then it's about you being confident and saying, for sure, we've done it for uh, so many children and this is what they've been able to do. Okay, does that answer your question? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, six years, eight months, years old, before he was put in a classical school method and he was one of the best students there. Then suddenly he went back to the age where he was one years old. 
So all his behavior, all his uh, act, the way he talk, the way he sing, uh, goes back to the time when he was one year, one years old. In Montessori, we don't label the children right with any labels like uh, special needs children. I just need uh, some advice of how I should handle this student because he's supposed to be. Uh, he's supposed to go to elementary level, but then in my school, uh, our management then decide that he need to put in kindergarten for one year before he go to elementary level. He was with you before that successfully? No. He was, uh, he was in another school. He was in another school successfully, so. Okay. And then, I don't know what happened. The parents did a, did a, did a open story about him, maybe if your parents were ashamed, but then suddenly he came to our school and would be my classroom. Your school is not just only? Yes, but my parents are. Okay, so uh, let me tell you uh, my personal story. Um, when I was growing up, I, went, I did my early years um, in Canada, which was a Montessori school. Okay, And um, when I was about seven, just out of preschool, I moved to West Africa. And we moved middle of the year and stuff like that. My parents couldn't get admission in a school for me that they wanted, and they had to put me in a very, very traditional school. And I went to school, and um, one of the first or second days, one of the boys in the class didn't do his homework. It was a very traditional school, okay? And it was also, you know, 1977. So she, the teacher got upset at the boy, and she pulled him by the ear, and she reprimanded him in front of everybody for not doing his homework. And in Africa, you know, when they get annoyed with you, they knock your head. Okay, it's just one of the she And she knocked his head so hard that the sound just rang through the class. And I, the next day, I became a basket case. And I couldn't go to school, and I wept and cried. And I couldn't articulate really to my parents why I didn't want to go to school. And it became such a hard situation that from grade one or two, I can't remember clearly, they had to put me back in kindergarten, okay? And I stayed in kindergarten for six months before, then they changed my school and stuff like that, okay? And then I caught up, all right? But whatever the reason is that the child has gone back to that, because he's with you now, and in a Montessori system, it's fixable, right? it can come back to where he was, right? And again, like I said, the beauty of, his, of it is that he can work at his own pace. That pressure is not there that I've got to get it done quickly and he has to be done immediately and things like that, okay? So the, the, what I always tell my students is you've got to have faith and patience always, okay? Faith and patience that the child is going to reveal himself to you. He has, every human being has this inside. We've already talked to you about the spiritual embryo. I'm not going to go into it again, okay? It's there. Nurture it, okay? Give him the prepared environment. Follow him. Give him that chance to get comfortable and feel easy again, all right? And then faith and patience, you will see, okay? Take my name card. Email me when it happens. I would love to know, okay? I would really love to know. Um, I think we're at the end of the session. I do want to answer your questions, so I'm here. Please come to me and we can, uh, I'll answer it for you one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, I'm sorry that I can't uh, answer them right now. Thank you very, very much for your time. And for your time. Okay. So let's see how lunch is served now. Okay. Uh, sudah ready semuanya siap? Ya. Oke. Okay. Uh, sebelum mulai, uh, saya mau menginformasikan ada beberapa uh, perubahan jadwal. Uh, nanti habis, habis ini uh, habis breakout session, uh, just stay in your place, jangan kemana-mana karena kita akan langsung dengan keynote. Jadi nggak coffee break dulu. Jadi langsung keynote. Keynotenya sampai jam 3 sore. Nanti setelah itu baru coffee break. Gitu. Ya. Yeah. Uh, so after after the break, this break session, just stay in your place. Don't go anywhere because after that we are going to do directly keynote until three o'clock. Then yes, and this is will open. Then you just stay here until three. Then start three until three thirty. We will do coffee break. Then after that we will uh, distribute a whole certificate.
uh, don't forget before you leave, you just go to that uh, our table over there to sign up for your certificate. Luar itu cuma buat sign up-nya aja. Nanti dapat sertifikatnya di sini. Oke? Uh, well, uh, <coughs> this is again a uh, new addition of speaker in our team, Ms. Yulmita Hadi. She will be giving a lecture in, in Bahasa, in Indonesian language. In your own language. So you'll be feeling very happy, I think. <laughs> she will she will come. Okay? <laughs> I, I don't know very much about her, but uh, uh, definitely she is a Montessorian. Mm -hmm. Alright? Yeah. From where you did your monastery course? Yeah, IMC. IMC. You did from IMC. In which year? Uh, years. Eight years. And so then you're working in a uh, school or a training center? Uh, the board. Okay, okay, that's not That's not You just introduce and then. Selamat siang. Ibu-ibu, ibu-ibu. Ibu. Oh, ada bapak-bapak, oh, ada bapak-bapak, ada ibu-ibu. Jadi uh, sesi ini dalam bahasa Indonesia ya. Ada yang kira-kira tidak mengerti bahasa Indonesia atau mengerti senang-senang? Semuanya mengerti bahasa Indonesia ya. Baik. Jadi nama saya Yuki Tahatiyati dan uh, ada yang pernah melihat saya? Oke, okay, Arumpi itu ya. Uh, di dalam seminar Montessori, Bangkres Montessori yang pernah diadakan uh, di beberapa kali di Indonesia ya, uh, uh, saya dan teman-teman yang lain ikut terlibat, baik sebagai uh, breakout speaker ataupun sebagai peserta tentunya. Kami juga pernah mengadakan konferensi di Jogja ya, dan nanti akan ada mengadakan kembali di Jogja. Jadi di Indonesia ini kita mendengar ada banyak konferensi yang sudah diselenggarakan. Um, boleh saya menanyakan pendapat Apakah ini hal yang baik ya uh, Beberapa konferensi yang diadakan di Indonesia ini Dan mengapa kira-kira Siapa yang uh, bisa memberikan masukan Siapa tahu bisa menjadi insight bagi yang lain Mengap, uh, Apakah hal yang baik bahwa mulai banyak ya Bahkan berjamuran konferensi-konferensi konferensi di Indonesia Ada yang berserapat itu yang baik? Ya silakan Menurut saya sebagai guru sudah 11 tahun saya menjadi guru untuk mengadakan untuk menghadiri seminar seperti ini untuk upgrade knowledge saya. Selain uh, ya pun saya sudah mengambil Montessori beberapa, beberapa tahun yang lalu, tetapi untuk saya setiap kali saya menghadiri seminar seperti ini, ya, saya punya wawasan untuk menjadi lebih open. Betul. Baik, terima kasih ibu siapa? Jaya. Dari Itu hal yang sangat benar sekali ya Karena meskipun uh, Maria Montessori sudah tidak ada 100 tahun yang lalu Tetapi apa yang ditinggalkannya telah menjadi warisan yang tidak ternilai harganya Betul ya, khususnya bagi anak-anak Indonesia Ya, Banyak negara-negara lain, betul ya kalau ke negara yang lain yang sudah mengalami perkembangan sedemikian rupa dalam pendidikan sehingga anak-anak yang menjadi utama di dalam pendidikan itu betul begitu, begitu? sementara kita sendiri setidaknya saya dan angkatan saya mungkin ya adalah produk pendidikan yang berdasarkan kurikulum sehingga kita ini kalau tidak memenuhi kurikulum kita lalu mendapat cap apa ya ya kita mendapat cap yang uh, kurang uh, uh, menyenangkan ya Bagaimana kita tidak uh, dianggap tidak memenuhi uh, standar seperti itu ya Nah ini adalah suatu kemajuan yang luar biasa Bagi teman-teman yang dari negara-negara uh, yang maju ya Hal-hal semacam ini mungkin tidak langsung bisa dipahami Betapa besar ya warisan ini Apa sih maknanya Nah uh, saya memiliki mimpi gitu ya Mungkin ini adalah mimpi dari para Montessorian yang ada dalam ruangan ini juga Yaitu bahwa 
ketika kita melihat anak-anak seperti yang ada di dalam uh, video itu, ya, anak seperti itu, ya, berapa sering ibu-ibu dan bapak, ya, melihat seorang anak yang sedang asik bermain, uh, bukannya bermain, misalnya sekedar menggunting-gunting, uh, tidak bikin gunting, tapi memotong dengan tangannya kertas ataupun tisu dalam waktu yang lama, ya. Seberapa sering kita pernah melihat hal itu Dan kemudian bukan hanya itu saja Orang tuanya menganggap Sudah saatnya makan misalnya Lalu langsung mengambil saja anak itu Saatnya makan Ataupun ayo kita mandi Terus sering melihat hal semacam itu ya. Setelah kita belajar Montessori Kita menjadi tersentuh ya Ada hal yang dirampas dari anak-anak ini ya Padahal orang tuanya melakukannya Karena mereka mencintai anak-anak itu Betul? Mandi supaya bersih Makan supaya tidak lapar ya Padahal anak itu pada saat itu sedang apa? Bukan bermain kita menyebutnya, tapi bekerja, betul. Ya, ya. Saya rasa di sini sudah uh, banyak yang sudah mengalami tentang sensitive periods, ya. Uh, kalau saya boleh tanya ya, kalau saya boleh tanya, ya, uh, apa yang menjadi kebutuhan, ya, ibu-ibu dan bapak untuk mendengarkan kembali tentang sensitive period? Siapa yang mau menjawab? Kenapa? merasa perlu untuk mendengarkan kembali sensitive periods mungkin Kristina terima kasih Kristina dari ibu rumah tangga saya berharap ya ini sungguhan ya bahwa saya berharap ada audiens yang adalah seorang ibu rumah tangga gitu satu saja cukup gitu ya dan ini lebih terkabul juga kenapa demikian Kenapa demikian kira-kira menurut ibu-ibu dan bapak sekalian? Karena kesadaran dari orang tua, apalagi bagaimana? Bisa langsung dipraktekkan sebelum terlambat gitu ya. Nah, mungkin adalah suatu kebaikan ya kalau misalnya kita um, yang seusia saya gitu sempat membesar anak tapi tidak sesuai mental model mental dan mental tapi mereka berkembang sesuai dengan Keinginan yang mungkin dalam bahasa kita ya adalah mengizinkan anak-anak itu sesuai dengan talenta dan bakatnya gitu ya tidak memaksakan misalnya orang tuanya guru anaknya harus jadi guru gitu dan sedih kalau anaknya tidak mau jadi guru kenapa ya mungkin karena kita sebagai guru tidak menunjukkan mencerminkan hal itu kepada mereka sehingga mereka merasa tertarik mungkin ada perasaan-perasaan demikian tapi kita tahu sekali lagi Maria Montessori selalu melihat seorang anak itu sebagai manusia yang kecil gitu, jadi bukan anak yang nggak tahu apa-apa gitu ya, bukan anak yang nggak tahu, tapi manusia kecil yang datang ke dalam dunia, lalu menunjukkan bagaimana caranya dia belajar. Orang-orang di sekitarnya itulah tadi ya, yang harus mengerti apa sih itu.